12 months ago, I was making less than $100 a month from YouTube, but now I make content full time. I have a team of eight people and I'm on an exponential growth path to some very high income numbers. I made a video a year and a half ago when I had 4,000 subscribers breaking down how I ran the YouTube channel at the time. So much has changed since then, so I thought I'd give you guys an update. This is how I'm running and growing my YouTube channel, which currently has 70,000 subscribers. So the difference between the channel now and 12 months ago is quite insane. In terms of a team, it was just me me doing almost everything and I had one other person helping me with it. Now, 12 months later, it's a team of eight people, including me. So there's me, there's Kendra, my fiance. She helps me with filming videos as a camera operator all the time and we bounce ideas off each other. Then I've got someone in a producer role who helps me come up with video ideas and helps plan the logistics of that. So I've got two long form editors and I've just started trying a short form editor. I have a personal assistant who's, well, my sister. And I also have my dad who helps me with researching things. You will probably also have lots of people around you already who can help you with various tasks. At first, you just got to take advantage of what you've got around you already. 12 months ago, it was a team of two, and now it's a team of eight. In June 2022, I had just 5,000 subscribers. And in June 2023, I had almost 70,000 subscribers. Views wise, this is where it starts getting a bit crazy. June 2022, the channel was getting 8,000 views in a month. June 2023, the channel got 278,000 views, which is 35 times growth in 12 months. Income, let's just break it down. YouTube ad revenue in the first half of 2023 was about $16,000. That is way bigger than the first half of last year, 2022. Crazy stuff. I've had a flood of sponsorship offers in the last three to six months. I can tell you the total amount of money that I have lined up for signed off sponsorship contracts, and that is $19,600, and that'll trickle in over the next three to six months. Affiliate links I have not had as much success with. I currently get somewhere between between $50 and $200 a month from affiliate links. One of the best affiliate links that I have at the moment is for Webull, the investing app. When someone signs up to Webull using the link in my video descriptions, they can get up to 12 stocks, each worth up to $3,000. And for sending Webull a new user, I get a $30 commission. The catch with affiliate programs though, is that companies can change the terms at any time, like that $30 commission could go down to basically nothing. Sooner or later, they're gonna stop offering this free stock thing, and I'll probably swap in a different affiliate link. But until then, Webull is where it's at. A really crazy thing is that 12 months ago, my entire income from YouTube was $72 a month. I don't know what it is exactly per month now, and it fluctuates month to month, but it is on an exponential trajectory, which just shows that when you put your time and effort into something that's scalable, they can impact a lot of people, your income can grow exponentially. In terms of the tools that I'm using, I use Notion to organize everything at this point to do with the whole content business. I use Google Drive storage to make sure that all my footage is safe and also to share it with my editors and my producer. I use Canva to make all kinds of graphics really easily. I use Epidemic Sound for pretty much all of the music I use in all of my videos. I used to just film everything either outside on the go or in the old family home in my old bedroom. But three months ago, I decided that it was time to get an office. This office, by the way, is a little bit over 300 square feet. It's got two massive, really nice windows, lets in a lot of light, and it costs about $700 a month. Extremely worth it to keep a filming space with my stuff in, just always set up, always nice and tidy, separate from being at home, which is a disaster, really cluttered. <laughs> so this is the office. You've seen bits of it in my videos before. Got the area where I work, and then we've got the area where Kendra works. I made this battery charging wall thing. So I've got my different like GoPro chargers, my camera battery charger. And the reason I've done this is one, it looks nice. It's just easier to access the battery slots. But also if I ever need to go traveling and I need to take all these batteries and all these chargers with me, I can just pick up this one piece and take them all in one go. I primarily use three lights. We got one here one there and another one here they're all the same kind they've all got soft boxes in which means that the light just isn't as harsh on my face the lights are Niwa 530 Pros RGB, got 4K color accurate monitor, which I've been wanting for years and I've just recently got it. And it's super good for video editing, photo editing, anything creative. NX Master mouse and keyboard, love them. Very sturdy, feel super nice. Over on this side of the office is the storage area. Originally it was just these like industrial storage shelves with nothing on. And then for a YouTube video, I was gonna try a big clothes flipping thing. I went way too big on it way too many clothes. These shelves filled with clothes and the other one clothes 
clothes? Clothes. I use this to store things that I use for videos. So we've got pressure washer from when I did the door-to-door -door car washing. We've got Lego sets, which are for this in-progress video where I'm trying uh, Lego investing. Over here, I also store all my video making equipment or Amazon Basics tripod. I've had that from close to day one and it has served me very well. It's not the most stable of tripods, but it works. And I also have a stack of, I think eight, eight or nine of these plain red t-shirts. There was a deal on them where they were just over five dollars each. So I was like, right, I'm getting tons. I've got a chest mount for my GoPro. Oh, and I have a GoPro. So yeah, this is a GoPro Hero 10, I believe. Hero 10, yeah, I think so. Oh, the camera that I'm filming on right now is a Sony ZV-1. There are better cameras available, and by better, I mean more versatile. It produces good quality footage, or hopefully you think so. The only problem with it is that I'm currently holding the camera right out at arm's length, and I also have it on like a little extender arm thing. It's got a very tight angle of view, and that's the widest you can get it. I also have a Rode NTG shotgun microphone on the top of this camera, which is the best on-camera shotgun microphone that I found for like the YouTube use case. This mic is a great mic, but just in case it breaks or something happens in my pocket where it accidentally switches off, I've got this one as a backup and it's very decent quality. This mic, I can't remember the name of it, I'll throw it up on screen, but I know that it's the one that some of the biggest TV networks in the UK, the BBC and Sky, they use it for pretty much everything. That's what I've heard at least. This microphone is plugged into something that's in my pocket. That's the mic. <laughs> Massive like thing, but it's attached to this thing called a Zoom F3. The great thing about having Kendra here in the office with me, it really is good. Like some people think that they won't be able to work with their partner, but we work side by side, sometimes on the same things, sometimes on completely separate things, works great. But the amazing thing about us both being self-employed, working on growing businesses together, is that rather than one of us being off in like a self-employed job, doing something completely separate, we're both doing the same thing together, learning together and growing together. Another crucial member of my team is my producer, Kai. Coming up with the video ideas and making sure that everything's in place for them is possibly the most important part of the process of making YouTube videos. So when I do plan for a video that I want to make, I hop into Notion and I've got this whole thing set up that makes it much easier to plan a video. This is something that I think a lot of YouTubers fail with and it's something that I failed with for quite a long time. I used to just put out video concepts that were not related to each other. You never knew what kind of video you were gonna get and that made you less likely to come back for more because it was just random stuff. I have different stages for where the video is at. It goes from an ideas bank, then I pick it out of there and start planning it. Then once it's all planned out, start the preparation for it. Then film it, upload the footage to Google Drive. The editors do their thing with it. We do the various rounds of alterations. Then I schedule it to post and then it's published. I like to think that there are three factors that go into whether a video will do well in the long run. Click-through rate, retention, or average watch time. And the third thing that will make a video do well, and I think that people don't talk about this enough, is it has to be a really good video concept. If the video concept isn't amazing, then it's not gonna be a million view video. I like to plan what the filming locations are gonna be, because if it's all in one place, a bit like this video, admittedly. I mean, we do move around the office, but if it's all in one place, then it can get a bit stale. I plan what characters I'm gonna have in a video, because if it's just me talking the whole time and there's no one else, a bit like this video, again, this is not a good, <laughs> this is not an example of an amazing video. But yeah, it's better to have different characters in the video. So that's just been an enormous dumping of my knowledge into your brain. Hope you found it useful.